What's going on, everybody? So I had some people today, they uh, got upset, you know, by some of the words that I used in my post. And this is the problem with Christianity right here, right? Because people, they love the lamb, but they don't like the lion. They say that they love God, but the truth is they don't really know God. A lot of people's you know, version of Christianity is this watered down gummy bear Christianity that this hippie Christianity that we see in America because, um, you know, we've been so comfortable, we've be become complacent. But you know what? I'm not going to just go on a rant. Let's go with the Bible. Number one, Jesus talked about hell more than heaven. It's not even close, all right? And he described hell in great detail. If you actually read your Bible and you look at it, Luke 16, Matthew 25, Jesus talked about hell more than he talked about blessings and all this stuff that we see preachers talking about today. But we don't like that kind of preaching no more. We don't like that kind of preaching that confronts our flesh and our desires. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. He said, he that don't take up his cross is not worthy of me. But we don't like when preachers do that, right? Galatians 3, look at this, right? Y'all think that I'm just mean, right? But the problem is you're not used to real biblical teaching. Galatians 3, Paul, he says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? He says, you're foolish. But if one of these preachers got up there and start talking about, oh, you're foolish, hey, you're being a fool, you get offended. Why? Because you're a gummy bear Christian. Psalms 14, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All right, the Bible says, hey, that person is a fool. That person is a dummy. Some translations, I believe the Message Bible, you'll read verses where they're talking about idols. It literally says, hey, stop being stupid. Because that's what they were trying to get across. Hey, you don't believe in God. You're a fool. Matthew 12. Old generation of vipers, right? Calling them snakes. But if a preacher got up there and was preaching that today, we so watered down, right, with our Christianity, this hippie kumbaya Christianity, we get offended and our flesh rises up and our pride rises up. Why? Because you a gummy bear Christian. We get it's so many verses in the Bible. Matthew 23. Look how Jesus is talking to these folks. But woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven again. Against men, all right? Warn to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Again, warn to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Woe unto you, blind guides. He says, you're blind. You get offended if a preacher gets up and say, man, you, you celebrate in Halloween. You're blind. No, you a gummy bear Christian. But because on, in America, right, we've been so comfortable for so long. Go to, go to church, drink our frappe, ma ma mocha, latte, whatever it is that they drink, clap our hands, sing two cute songs and go home and we want to hear a motivational message. Most people ain't been exposed to this. They don't know the Bible for themselves. If you read the Bible, I always say this. They say, you're so controversial. Every man of God in the Bible was controversial to the point that all of the real ones, the things that they preach and they said, people wanted to beat them up. People wanted to kill them. The stuff that they preach made people so mad. They said, man, I want to put hands on you. Man, I want to stone you. Man, I want to crucify you. Now, when you look at the Christianity and you look at the stories in the Bible, how does that stack up against the Christianity that we have today? How do the prophets of the Bible stack up against the prophets that we see today? The Bible says in Samuel that when Samuel came, the people were afraid. They said, man, the prophet is coming. Now people will spend money and, and spend hundreds of dollars to buy a ticket to see a prophet who's going to prophesy to them their address or you're going to get a new car. Where do we see that in the Bible? That's my issue. It's not that I'm mean. It's that you're used to gummy bear Christianity and the time is short. You know, the thing that God has told me, he said, I brought you through the military for a reason. I wanted you to be military minded for a reason. Look at it. It's in the Bible. You got to, the Bible says study to show yourself approved. If you really knew the Bible, you wouldn't be going to these gummy bear watered down, tickle me Elmo Christian churches. He said, you 
foolish Galatians. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart there's no God. But when I say a Christian is goofy for celebrating Halloween, you get offended. Why? Because you're used to gummy bear Christianity. Don't confront my sin. Don't confront what I do wrong. I want God to be God in my life, but he's not Lord of my life. I don't want him to rule over my life. I don't want him to correct me. I don't want him to check me. I don't want to hear any type of preaching that's going to make my flesh feel convicted. That's the problem. I'm not, and I'm not angry. The Bible says, Jeremiah said the word was like fire. Shut up in my bones. I feel this thing in my spirit. Casual Christians are going to be casualties. We're so, we're deceived by Halloween. You've got Christians dressing up for Halloween. Of course they don't understand what's going on with politics. Of course they don't understand what's going on with the spirit of the Antichrist. We're deceived by the dumbest stuff. Of course it's easy for the enemy to deceive us with other things and we're not able to see. The Bible says the God of this world has blinded their minds. But if I preach to you and I say, hey, you're blind, you get offended. And then you want to leave the church. You want to unfollow. I tell people, man, I love when people unfollow me. That lets me know I'm doing something right. Jesus, he had, well, you're not going to like this. Jesus had a mega church. He had literally thousands of people following him. But then when the message got hard and he started talking about drink of my blood and eat of my body, not even all of the apostles were with him when it's time to go to the cross. They say, Brother Marcus, you're, call, you're, you're uh, causing division. He said, I'm coming with a sword. I'm going to set mother against daughter, father against son, but we don't like that kind of preaching, but it's biblical. Everybody claims to be a Christian until it gets biblical. Everybody runs around and says, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. But if we look at the Bible and actually compare your Christianity to what we see in the Bible, we might find out, like Paul says, oh, foolish Galatians. The Bible says in the end times, there would be a strong delusion. In the end times, many would fall away. You know what they say? They say, Brother Marcus is a false teacher because he preaches a works-based salvation. Jesus said, take up, take up, take up, pick it up, pick up your cross and follow me. That's works. They don't like that. They don't like that. They get mad when I say, hey, take up your cross and die to yourself. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Oh, no. All I have to do is just believe. Cardi B and them believe. The Bible say the devils believe. But the problem is we don't have enough people who will step up and preach these kind of message. The people that represent the kingdom, the people that have thousands of followers. These, you think because these people make really good music and you feel goosebumps. Oh, I felt the spirit of God on that. You think that they're right with God, even though the Bible says the gifts are without repentance. You think because they've got thousands of followers, millions of followers followers, got a big church, they're right with God. And then on the flip side of that, some of you got a small church and you think you're better than all the bigger church and it's just pride. So yes, watch this. Don't come to me talking about you're mad because I said somebody was goofy. Or I said somebody was a dummy. That's the, wor the words that they use in the Bible. It's just maybe a little different. They say fool. The message Bible says stupid. God flooded the earth. He flooded the whole earth. The Bible says he repented that he had ever made mankind. He was so upset. He said, I'm going to wipe this earth. But you don't like that kind of God. You don't like talking about that kind of God. You say you love him, but do you love that side of him? You love the lamb. You love that he died for your sins. You love that he paid the price for you. But what about the Jesus that's coming back to throw people in hell? Do you love that Jesus? Can you still say amen? Can you still clap your hands? Do you love the Jesus that is coming? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you and he's going to throw people in hell. That's a reality. Jesus preached about hell more than anything else. Biblical. Jesus called folks vipers. He told them your father is the devil. So I don't want to hear this nonsense. People get offended because they don't know what Christianity is. Some, so many churches, if Paul was here, you would be offended. Paul would make you mad. You guys know I always use this example and I'm done. I'm going to end right here. I'm going to end the video with this. If Paul was here and the prophets was here, the real prophets, not these prophets, dollar sign prophets we see today 
Most churches would not receive him. If Paul was here today, he would be eating these churches up. He would be writing letters to the church of Chicago, to the church of Atlanta. What's going on with this homosexuality? Why do you got homosexuals in the pulpit? Why do I see uh, your people running around dressed like ghosts and witches on Halloween? He say, oh, you foolish Chicagoans, you foolish Californians. Who has bewitched you? Who has deceived you that this gospel is watered down? That your Christianity is watered down. It's time out, man. The world is so crazy, right? But guess what? Christians still want to dress up on Halloween and they want to celebrate Halloween. We've got ex-witches and ex-warlocks who used to practice, used to be devil worship, used to tap into that dark stuff, and then God pulls them out, and then they come to you and they say, hey, Christians, don't celebrate Halloween, and they still celebrate. So if you're deceived about that, and you're mad about that, and you're offended about that, okay, of course, you're not going to understand everything else. You're not going to understand when I tell you, they say Christians shouldn't be involved in politics. The Bible says acknowledge God in all your ways. The Bible says it's daily bread. God has something to say about everything that's going on. If you read your Bible and you knew your Bible and the Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Think about this video like boot camp. Some of you ain't going to make the cut. Some of you going to get in your feelings. Some of you going to get mad. And that's why you can't be a soldier in the army of the Lord because we're handing out swords. All right. The Bible, the word is a double edged sword. It's going to cut. But you want a lollipop. You want me to get on here and give you a lollipop. The Bible says in the last days, they would be seduced by doctrines of devils, seducing spirits, seduce me with the preaching. You, you think brother Marcus is a DJ and you come on here and you put in a request and you say, preach this, play this. And I say, no, I'm going to speak what thus saith the Lord. I'm going to preach what the Bible says. I'm going to stand. If everybody else bow, you can call me arrogant, but the problem is people mistake arrogance with confidence. People see David, people thought. David was arrogant when he went to fight Goliath. People thought Jesus was arrogant. People thought John the Baptist was arrogant. They said, by who? Who who validated you? Who said you could baptize people? Who do you think you are? They told Jesus, they said, who do you think you are to preach to us, to teach to us? We are learned men. You guys have no idea how many people I know who are in the uh, the Christian industry, the, the big side of Christianity, and they look at me and they say, who does this guy think he is? I know who I am. I'm not arrogant, but I know what I'm preaching is the truth. We're living in times where we can't afford watered down Christianity. We're living in times where, and the Bible says it, it says in the last days, they're going to be offended. Look at the world we're living in. People look to get offended. They, they're looking for something. It's like a drug. Oh, I, I need to be offended. I need to be outraged so I can make a post, so I can make a video, so I can go viral. Being offended is a choice. It's a choice. I dealt with some racist stuff the other day. I said, man, great is he that is in me than he's in the world. You're going to answer to God? Nobody could stop me. If God is in you, nobody can stop what God's going to do in your life. He says, I'm going to finish what I started in you. So you got people trying to manipulate and water down because Christianity is a business to them. But if they really believe the Bible and they really believe the word of God, they would take a bold stand. And I was, I was hitting on that stuff with Daniel. Legislation, politics is what got Daniel thrown in the lines then. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego politics, legislation. People went to the king and they said, let's be manipulative. Let's come up with some kind of law that's going to get these Christians in trouble. That's going to get these believers, these children of Israel in trouble. Same thing happening right now. I'm going to say like Paul, oh foolish Galatians, you are a foolish Galatian if you think there's not people that are running around in America right now who hate Christians and they're trying to come up with laws and legislation. That's why they're pushing the stuff that they're pushing in the schools. That's why they're coming for your children. That's why they're making all these kind of laws. That's why they're trying to take your power little by little by little by little, a little bit here, a little bit there. The Bible says it's the small foxes. And you say, oh, it's no big deal. No, no big deal. 
they get a little bit more territory, get a little bit more ground, get a little bit more indoctrination in my children. It's no big deal because you're a gummy bear Christian. And I don't mean that in an offensive way. Gummy bear, squishy, no backbone, can't stand for nothing. That's why I always tell you, go look at these, go look at these Christian celebrities, Instagrams and Facebook pages. Why is it the only time they're outraged and they take a stand? It's the same stand that, that the world said they could be outraged about. It's the same thing that the news is outraged about. It's the same thing that CNN is outraged about. Why don't they ever take a stand? If Jesus said you're going to be hated for my name's sake, why are they trying to be buddy-buddy with the world? When Jesus said, hey, that the world, the devil, that's your enemy. Why are they trying to be friends with the enemy? Just like you dress up for church, some Christians tonight are getting dressed up for the devil's services. That's what you're doing. You know, a lot of us group in church, we put on the suit, we put on the dress, we go to church. People getting dressed up for the devil services tonight. How many ex-witches and ex-warlocks got to come in and tell you, hey, don't celebrate. I've been on that side. Joke to the devil. You're goofy to the devil. He's looking at you in your costume. He's like, <laughs> man, look, I, I ain't got to mess with this guy. Look at this clown. He is. People say, oh, Brother Marcus, you're de uh, decisive. Yeah, we're separating the lukewarm from those who are on fire. We're separating the casuals from the real ones. The sword is going to cut. And either when you get cut, if you can't say amen, say ouch. The goal of these kind of videos and these kind of tough messages is to get you to go to the altar and say, man, Lord, help me. It's not to just be mean. It's say, Lord, help me. I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to be casual. The Bible say... My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I don't want to be ignorant. Help me, Lord. Show me. Lead me. Guide me. Shape me. Mold, mold me. Break me. I can't make it without you. I don't want to be one of the ones that falls away to seducing doctrines of devils. I don't want to be one of those people. Keep me. Guide me, Lord. Show me the way. Be a light under my path. That's the goal of these kind of videos. But gummy bear Christianity, these complacent preachers, oh, just keep living how you're living. Keep doing what you're doing. We're not going to preach nothing to offend you because we want you to keep giving an offering. Love you guys. I'm out. Y'all be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus' name. I got to get ready for church. We about to have some church today at Firehouse. I'm excited. I probably live stream it. Honestly, the sound might not be so great because it's a little bit echoey. But now that I'm off the 30 day ban, I'll probably live stream it for you guys. Love y'all. www.marcusrogersministries.org. Hey, we need all the help we can get with that building. It's an old building. It's going to take a lot of renovation. I've been posting all the details on uh, YouTube. You can see a walkthrough of the whole school. So just go check it out. Pray about it. Be blessed.